Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So what do the ASUS RG Flow X13 and the Poster 2 have in common? Well, actually not that much, apart from having a screen and being powered by a battery. But that won't hold me back from bringing them together. But you have been warned, today's video might differ slightly from our usual straightforward reviews. As you can see, I'm also not in our usual studio, which brings us to the Poster 2, I guess. We got the chance to test the good-looking Swedish EV for about a week, and since I haven't made a long-distance trip with an electric car, well, that is why we are in Italy right now. And since I still have to do some work while we are here, I brought the updated RG Flow X13 with me as my daily driver and to talk you guys through our results for this one. I have actually no idea how this video will look like in its final form. It will most likely resemble some kind of vlog mixed with our usual review structure. But in Italy with a car. Let's see how it goes. Before I tell you more about how it was to drive a little more over 1000 kilometers or about 620 miles as a total electric car newbie, let me talk you through what is on offer with the 2023 Flow X13. At the heart of the small 2-in-1 convertible beats Team Red 7940HS, and in our sample the RTX 4060 is taking care of rendering your frames on the QHD Plus 165Hz display. Unfortunately, the 32GB of system memory are reserved for the 4070 model, so this one has to rely on 16GB of LPDDR5 RAM and a 1TB SSD. Circling back to our ride for this trip, the Poster 2 we tested is their 2022 long-range single-motor variant in the base configuration. My experience with electric cars for now was from a car sharing service in Hamburg, and since I usually drive a 15-year-old petrol car, I always wanted to know what it is like to drive one of these for more than just city commutes. So naturally, when we have been able to organize a Polestar press vehicle, I jumped on it without second thought and organized our little vlog vacation trip to northern Italy. We started our trip in Hamburg, all the way up north in Germany, and planned a stop in Leipzig, which is about two thirds of the way. I kept my research upfront to a minimum to see how it is to have an electric car on such a trip without a lot of additional knowledge. The first part of the trip was about 400 kilometers, usually a 4 to 4.5 four hour drive on the German Autobahn, and with the pull start it was pretty much spot on. We started with about 82% in the tank, or rather the battery, did one not really necessary stop 45 minutes in to get familiar with the charging procedure and to get some coffee, and then another 25 minute stop for a toilet break, another coffee and to top off the car which took us to our first destination with an easy above 30% reserve. On our second day we started with 90% battery capacity and did a small 10 minute break after an hour. Well, we needed a snack and since there was an empty charger, well, we might as well use it. The whole trip was a little over 700 kilometers, so we planned our first major charging break around halfway somewhere in South Germany. We arrived with around 15% left in the battery and bringing it up to 90% took about 25 minutes, which aligns quite well with stretching your legs after a three and a half hour drive and you might have guessed it, some coffee. About two hours later we did another stop charging for an easy 20 minutes to arrive at our final destination in South Tyrol with about 60% battery capacity to spare. Which brings us to where we are right now. Our home and office for the next few days is this beautiful place by the lake, conveniently outfitted with both wall boxes for our alpine adventures and pretty fast Wi-Fi and amazing views for our work hours. Getting back to the X13, the lightweight 2-in-1 was the perfect fit for this trip, since it's both incredibly portable and also much more powerful than you would assume given its very small footprint and thin profile. On this trip, I needed an equal amount of performance to go through our video footage and edit images, as well as solid battery life to do some writing for this very video script and the accompanying article on our website, so the flow pretty much checked all the boxes. ASUS tuned the chassis slightly, with a very clean and subtle design on the very flex-resistant display lid and on the equally solid base unit. And while the X13 might be an ROG notebook, I would consider the overall styling as subtle enough to make this one qualify as a work device as well. And if you consider how many 13-inch 2-in-1s are out there with a fast CPU and up to an RTX 4070 in this form factor, well, there aren't that many. 
Regarding ports, while the layout has not changed, some of the connectors became much more potent than in last year's iteration. On the left we get ASUS's proprietary XG Mobile connector with a PCIe interface and a standard USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 supporting power delivery. In addition, RG made room for an HDMI 2.1, a micro SD card reader and the audio combo port. On the other side of the thin convertible, ASUS updated the USB-C to the USB 4 standard and a single USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 completes the very robust port selection for the very small notebook. On the nice to have front in terms of connectivity, the X13 can deliver solid numbers during our wireless transfer test. Still, if you want to use the X13 as your primary communication device, the 1080p webcam might leave you a little disappointed. As I have mentioned already, I had to do quite a bit of typing while being on this trip, and it was an absolute pleasure on the X13. The keys offer solid travel and a clear but not overly pronounced pressure point for a very satisfying feel. The touchpad benefits quite a bit from the increased surface area and worked without a hitch during our testing. As you have probably noticed by now, we have changed locations once more and are actually back in Germany, if not quite home yet. We spent the last few days in another place in South Tyrol and did some of the footage of the X13 as well as took the poster up to the mountains for a small day trip. The electric sedan handled quite well even on tight mountain roads and the available torque made it a very fun car to drive on curvy back roads. Even I would never dare to call myself a sporty driver. Charging in the area was not a problem at all, with both fast charging stations as well as standard charging spots being available without a problem. But unfortunately it is time for us to get home and trade in the amazing weather and views for our studio back home in Hamburg. So I see you in a bit for our benchmark and test results for the X13 and our final verdict about the Polestar 2. Right folks, welcome to our usual studio and I would say we focus on the X13 for now before wrapping things up with the Polestar. Let's dive right into it with our usual display measurements. The 13.5 inch touch display made the jump to a QHD plus resolution and 165Hz and comes with pretty solid specs across the board. Around 450 nits average brightness might get you in trouble outdoors, especially with the glossy screen. But for most use cases it's definitely more than adequate. Contrast is pretty alright for an IPS, even though we would have wished for lower black levels for deeper blacks. I guess we are all a little spoiled by all those mini LEDs and OLEDs lately. Color gamut coverage is good with decent factory calibration, which allows you to get to professional levels with manual calibration easily. I use the X13 for most of our image editing and color grading on this trip, and it's a great little creator machine. Especially since you can make on the fly adjustments with any MPP enabled active stylus. Gamers will be delighted to hear about the super snappy response times, and all in all, the excellent screen is giving us not much to complain about. In the CPU department, the Flow comes with AMD's Ryzen 9 7940HS. We already know from the RG G14 and the Blade 14. It cannot quite keep up with its bigger brother and some competing notebooks with Intel's i7 13700H for example are also ahead. But if you keep the form factor for the X13 in mind, it's a very solid performer. System performance puts the small convertible ahead of most similarly sized notebooks, which is not a huge surprise given that most of those are equipped with 4050s in our database. Transfer rates for the NVMe SSD are alright, but nowhere near class leading. On the GPU side of things, the RTX 4060 running at 60 watts cannot really set itself apart from high wattage RTX 4050s. But compared to the small ADA chip running at a similar wattage to the Flow's 4060, the performance uplift is still pretty substantial, so the upgrade might still be worthwhile. The X13 is also available with an RTX 4070, which is pretty bonkers if you think about it. But opting for that one running at such a low wattage might only make sense if you really want the added GPU grunt in niche workloads like Blender or other content creator applications. If you want to use the small 2-in-1 for your virtual entertainment, we are dealing with a similar situation compared to our synthetic tests. The RTX 4060 performs on par with high wattage 4050s once more, so while we are not talking class leading numbers, it is still pretty insane what such a small notebook can deliver. Compared to last year's model with the RTX 3050 Ti, you can also rely on double the video memory, which is especially handy for modern very demanding titles or once more for anything content creation related. 
And if you take DLSS and FrameGen into account, it's actually pretty impressive how much performance you can squeeze out of a 60 watt GPU running in such a small notebook. In Cyberpunk, for example, in the ray tracing ultra setting, running the integrated benchmark natively netted us around 23 FPS in 1080p versus around 51 FPS with DLSS in the balanced setting. And a pretty bonkers and very playable 71 FPS with frame generation. To give you a more detailed overview of what to expect from this tiny gamer, we tested a bunch of games for you in 1080p and QHD. And while you enjoy our benchmark results, please consider liking this very video and subscribing to the channel. Your support means a lot to us. Fan noise is quite well controlled, especially if you consider the Fin profile and take advantage of the performance profiles ASUS offers in their Armory Crate application. As always, we took some noise samples for you, so you can get a rough idea of what to expect. When AMD announced their Zen 4 Phoenix APUs quite a while back, we have all been pretty excited, hoping for fast and efficient silicon for performance and endurance. So far, laptops with Team Red CPUs only partially delivered in this regard. But thankfully, the X13 is a prime example that you can indeed have a powerful, portable and long-lasting notebook. With almost 12 hours in our Wi-Fi standard test, the flow mops the floor with the competition. And we are not only talking small gaming notebooks here, but also office notebooks without even a dedicated GPU. Alright folks, I guess it's about time to wrap up this video. So where to start? It was definitely something entirely different to kind of review a car and a small 2-in-1 laptop at the same time. But I hope you still enjoyed this very video. But taking the X13 on this trip really proved how very well the Flow's overall concept works. Having such a small notebook that does not take up a whole lot of valuable luggage space while still giving you adequate performance for both work and games is simply amazing. ASUS made improvements in all the right places, while keeping the same form factor and with the added GPU performance and AMD Zen 4 APUs, the X13 can definitely get stuff done wherever you are. So how about the Polestar 2? Well, as I said in the beginning, it was my first experience driving an electric car for such a long trip. And to be quite honest, the whole thing went as smoothly as it can be. And the good looking sedan is, well, a car after all. It does not look like a spaceship, but rather clean with that subtle understatement that I personally like a lot. It drives great and charging the car on long trips can easily be integrated into brakes you would probably do anyways. If you want to follow along the trip in more detail, I will also do a written article on our website. And for the X13, you will find our review as always in the description as well. This shall be it for today, before this video gets any longer. Please feel free to sub to the channel and like this video if you felt entertained and make sure to check out some of our recent videos if you cannot get enough. Thanks a ton for going to Italy with us. You have been absolutely fantastic as always and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.